Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for User's Perspective. Identify the impact of common transactions on a new company's financial statements. In this learning outcome, we are going to track the life of a simple startup business run by my son Spencer. He will start with nothing and then enter into several transactions as he strives to use his management skill to take his business idea from just an idea, Utah Straw Hat Company, into a profitable entity. But where can he get the money he needs to get started? He needs some assets. He could break open his piggy bank, take the cash and coins out of the piggy bank and contribute them to Utah Straw Hat Company and thereby be an owner. He could also go to his dad and his dad could act as a lender providing loans to Utah Straw Hat Company or as an investor where dad would become a partner or an equity investor in the business. Spencer could also go to the local bank and ask for a loan. At any rate, Spencer's Utah Straw Hat Company will need some assets and those assets will need to be funded through either debt or equity. That brings up the balance sheet equation. As you know, what a company has should also be equal to the claims against what it has. What it has are known as assets. Then, on the other side of the equation, we need to describe how they financed those assets. Another way of saying that is who has claims on those assets. The answer to that question is that lenders and creditors, which are summarized on the balance sheet as liabilities, also known as borrowings, and equity. These are the owner's claims against those assets. Let's dig into Spencer's new business. Starting on day one, the original owner, Spencer, invests in the business. On January 1st, X6, Spencer invested $51 of his own piggy bank money into Utah Straw Hat Company, thereby obtaining 100% ownership of the new company. Let's look at what that does to the balance sheet equation. USHC's assets will increase $51, representing the cash that it just received. Liabilities have not changed because Spencer did not loan the money to the company, but rather he invested and became an owner. So assets increased by 51 and his equity in those assets increased by 51. Let's go on to day two, partner invest. On January 2nd, X6, Dad becomes a partner and invests $49, thus receiving 49% ownership. Spencer's ownership now only claims 51% of USHC's assets. Our prior balance sheet showed the $51 in assets and Spencer's equity in those assets. Now, with Dad's contribution of $49, total assets are now $100. Who has claimed those assets? Liabilities didn't change, but Dad now has equity of $49 claimed against those assets, and therefore we balance again. Day three, Spencer realizes he needs some more money, so he goes and obtains a bank loan. On January 3rd, X6, he borrowed $200 from St. George International Bank for one year at 12% simple interest to be paid annually. The previous balance sheet showed assets of 100 and all of it being claimed by the equity partners. USHC borrowed $200, thus increasing assets, these are cash assets in this case, resulting in $300 in assets at the end of the period. Liabilities increase $200 because this increase of $200 is fully claimed by the bank because they provided that financing. Liabilities are now $200 and equity didn't change at all. But as you can see, assets of $300 equal total liabilities and equity of $300. Day 4. Company orders inventory. On January 4th, X6, USHC creates and sends a purchase order to China Hat Company, its vendor, to purchase 100 hats at 50 cents per hat. So that's going to be $50 of hat purchases. Previous balance sheet showed $300 in assets claimed by the lenders and by the owners. At this point, since this was just an order, there's no current impact on the financials. We don't owe any money for these hats because we haven't purchased them yet. But it will be recorded in the accounting system, such as QuickBooks, to remember Remember the purchase, document its authorization, and receive the good. This is called a purchase order. It's not actually an accounting transaction yet. Now, on day five, we actually receive the inventory. CHC delivers 100 hats. Total invoice amount is $60 as follows. $50 for the hat cost itself, which was 100 hats at 50 cents. $7 for shipping. $3 sales tax. Assets will go up by $60 because that's the total cost of this new inventory and we're at 316 assets. Now who has claims against those assets? $60 is owed for the total invoice. That's the amount owed. We now owe $260 in liabilities. Equity did not change because this under what we call accrual accounting, it's not yet an expense. We have the asset of inventory and we owe the vendor for that inventory. It's not an expense yet because we still have the asset and it still has value. 
Now when we sell the inventory, it changes things a little bit. On day six, the company sells inventory to a customer. USHC sold 10 hats on account, that means the customer is going to pay later, to a Lee Turf company for $21. $20 is the sales price, $1 is the sales tax on that sales price. The sales tax we will have to submit to the state government. The 10 hats cost $6. So this is the sales price, but what did it cost Spencer? $6 prior balance sheet and then we added $21 representing the sales price and the sales tax that's a receivable from the customer that's an asset and we owe a dollar to the state for the state sales tax payable and the other $20 increases the owner's equity that's revenue that's going to be on the income statement which increases the owner's revenue and we gave up six dollars of inventory that comes out of our assets since we gave up inventory in making a sale, we're going to have an expense called cost of goods sold, which will appear on the income statement. Effectively, our margin on the sale was $14, and that margin belongs to the owners. Total assets, $375, liabilities, $261, and the difference is $114 belonging to the owners. Day 7, USHC writes a check, number one, to pay off the $60 invoice from China Hat Company. Prior balance sheet, we give away $60 in cash, reducing our assets to $315. Our liabilities go down. Why did we give up this $60 in assets? It's to pay off this liability that was in there. And we're down to liabilities of 201. The difference is still equity. As you notice, the equity did not change because all we did was we reduced assets and liabilities. Equity is not impacted. Day eight, company receives the customer payment from Ali Turf in the amount of $21. We start with the balance sheet numbers from the prior day and we received $21 in cash in exchange for the receivable. So in other words, in this $315, Ali Turf owed us $21. They paid the $21 in cash and therefore we forgive them the receivable. Total assets did not change and remain at $315. In addition, since total assets didn't change, liabilities and equities also don't change. At this point, the company can prepare a draft of its unadjusted financial statements. We call it unadjusted because we haven't really accounted for some things like interest expenses that we might record at the end of the month to provide a more perfect representation of the cost of doing business. But at least right now, we can kind of see where we're at using draft unadjusted financial statements. With that in mind, let's look at them. Here's the draft income statement. As you can see you take the sales revenue less the cost of goods sold to get what's called the gross margin. If you've ever seen the Shark Tank they focus a lot on the percentage of gross margin. So if you take the gross margin divided by the sales revenue that gives you 70%. That would be a pretty good margin percentage because it's this margin that can pay for the other operating expenses of running the business. If this is too small in percentage terms or in dollar terms to cover the operating expenses you're going to re result in a loss for the business. In this case we haven't accounted for rent and utilities and so these will come in still and hopefully they will be less than the gross margin produced by making the sales. So far, at least in the unadjusted draft financials, it looks like Utah Straw Hat Company is profitable. Statement of partners equity. As you can see, we keep track of the two partners' equity separately. Here's Spencer's equity, his original contribution, and he obtained 51% of the $14 in net income. Dad got 49% of that income, and so this is their new breakout of their equity in this $114. The balance sheet. Utah Straw Hat Company is sitting with $261 in cash and it has $54 of inventory sitting around in its warehouse. As we know, it has a 70% margin. So if we could sell this, the value of this sold is a lot more than the value of this sitting on the shelf. So the goal will be to get this sold, hopefully at the same 70% margin. We still owe the state for sales taxes. We still owe the bank for notes payable. We haven't yet computed the interest owed, but we will as we finish this at the end of January. So January 31st, first we prepare final financials that would include the interest payable and we see the owner's capital. As you can see total assets equals total liabilities and owner's equity. Finally we have the statement of cash flows. This is interesting. Actual cash received from customers was $21 but we've already paid our suppliers $60 so although on the income statement, we showed positive net income. The actual cash flows from our operating activities are negative 39. Luckily, we had borrowed some money from the bank and we also had partners who contributed. So we haven't gone into negative cash position yet, but as we sell more goods, hopefully we'll generate positive cash flow from operating activities and move into a profitable position from a cash perspective. What we've just done is simply go through a bunch of transactions for a new business and show the resulting impact on the balance sheet equation and the financial statements. 
I hope this has helped you kind of get a perspective of the flow of accounting for transactions and the resulting financial statements.